Welcome, pool fans from around the world, to another AccuStats production. My name is Derek Keith, and right behind me, well, we have hundreds of players that come here every January to the Derby City Classic. This is the 23rd year. We have over 400 bank pool players. We got straight pool players, nine ball, one pocket, but in front of me is a beautiful diamond, five by 10 foot. It's called the Bigfoot, and this is the Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge. And let me ask, Derby City, have you guys been impressed with the play so far? It has been incredible. And this is the last first round match of the tournament. So let's meet the players. First up, he is a world nine ball and 10 ball champion, US Open champion, two time Dirty City all around champion. He's sponsored by Lomax, and he's from Toronto, Canada. Please make some noise for the lion, Alex Pagulion. <laughs> and his opponent is a 2017 and 19 nine ball world pool masters champion, six time European champion and three time member of Moscone Cup for Team Europe, sponsored by Predator, Ecotiza, and DS Billiards from Magala, Spain, the Matador, David Alcady. <laughs> Our referee for the match is Dwayne Payne. Gonna send it up to Mark Wilson and Skylar Woodward in the AccuStats booth. We're coming to you live from high atop the AccuStats Arena here at the Derby City Classic. This is the Bigfoot 10 ball tournament. And tonight we're blessed with Moscone Cup superstar, Skylar Woodward. Welcome Skylar and tell us something to look for in this one. Um, you know, I think uh, if the tables aren't very, you know, wide open or something, I think you'll see a lot of good safety battles with these two. Uh, they both kick great, one and, and you know, they, uh, they lag good, they tie. <laughs> <laughs> That leg's a pretty big deal. Well, Alex laid it in there good again. Alex is super accurate, and I've oftentimes thought that he would go deep in this tournament. He's never won it. This is our ninth edition. But, uh, I mean, he plays on 6 by 12 Yeah. You, know, you, you don't know too many pool players that own a maximum 147. I think he has two of them to his credit on a 6 by 12 So, I think he won the, the 10 foot when it was a. Uh, in Tunica, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. I meant here at the Derby, but that's correct. Yeah. So he has won one on this, uh, you know, big table. The first time I've seen him play with wearing glasses. Yeah, you know, he did that for a while, and then he quit doing it. And now, the first time I've seen him in a while, and now he's doing it again. So the break, have you been seeing a lot of hard breaks or people kind of letting up a little? Yeah, letting up and squaring them up. Seven ball found the pocket. And then we got the speed demon, and it tells you what the speed is there. So that was 17.93, and that's where the 17 to 18 and a half is right where they've been making the balls. Yeah. When the guys crank it up to 22, they're not making the balls. So hmm. it's very odd. But anyway, you can see he's blessed with a good start here. Yeah, nice opening shot. The bridge is really important on the 5 by 10 It comes into play so much more often than it does on a 9-foot table. Especially with, with Alex. He's <laughs> yeah. going to need a couple extra times. A little high inside here, or is he going to try to drag it back with low right? So just right and just try to come middle table. Yeah, he yeah. hit it heavy. A lot of times in these events, Alex will start off real ragged and uh, not play real good the first couple of racks, and then he kind of gets in to the match, and, and then it comes back to the old Alex I'm used to seeing. You're right. just gets like he's a little tight or something and then gets loose, huh? Or maybe more like he hasn't been playing that much. You know, sometimes right. he comes in a little bit rusty, but it doesn't take him long to get back up to speed. How Katie kind of a, known as a shot maker type player. Fearless shot maker. You know, I'm kind of excited to see David play because he just recently switched uh, switched cues, and now he's playing with uh, with Predator. 
So, uh, kind of wondering how he's playing. It was purely struck. It was, he was committed on that stroke. He wasn't ambiguous about hoping to get it in. And he fell just a little flat on this. It's going to be hard to get the cue ball away from the rail, but the six ball is near the corner pocket, and that helps. I think he'll just roll forward into the 10 here. Yeah, just bump the 10, and you have an automatic shot on the 6 from there. 6 hanging. Let's say you could could jack up and went between the 10-9, but takes a chance uh, of missing more often. And especially here in the early stages, you hate to let games like this slip away from you because they count just as much as the games at 9-9. Nine nine, so. Yeah, exactly. When you have an open opportunity, you can't let those go. Okay, he tried to spin it a little bit with inside spin there, which at that speed really didn't matter, but didn't help the accuracy. So Alex has gifted a second opportunity at this rack. So this is the last match, right, of the first round? That's correct. Right. Everybody advances till tomorrow, all the winners, and then tomorrow's match is worth four thousand dollars. I haven't got to watch, but a lot of good play in the tournament oh, so far. Oh, superior, yeah. yeah. Uh, Gorst played a 850, uh, or 950, I'm sorry, and wow. broke and ran five times. And then Filler also broke and ran five times and played a 943 or something. I, I wrote it down, but way big. And that he beat Kazakas, who played 909. Huh. Yeah, really good. Anybody, any, anybody really just stand out or them two? Uh, no, not just those two. Uh, uh, Shane played pretty good last night, and uh, I tell you, Appleton played tremendous. And, oh, yeah, Jason Shaw, that guy. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Left-hander, he, he tore up the table. I mean, it was... What's his name? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he played good. He, he loves the 10-footer. Uh, yeah, and we, we all probably kind of knew he would be in stroke coming into here after... <sighs> playing straight pull for that many days and just running balls. 9,000 balls he pocketed in like five or six days. Now, that really gets you loosened up, and you can really see the difference in the match. He didn't come out ragged or not confident. And in, the, in the tournament here? Yeah. Uh, oh, but his fingers were blistered from doing it, but it's that work hangover type of a thing where you kind of, oh, cue ball got away. Uh, it's, it's one of those things when you pop in that many balls, you're absolutely fearless about shooting at anything, and you're not afraid to miss. There you can see the break demon there. Tells us he hit them a little harder than the other guys have been hitting them. I don't, I don't think the side balls went either on that one. Right. No, they haven't been going at the higher rates of speed. Right about mm. 18 and a half is kind of the sweet spot here for whatever reason. And the only one that's the exception to that is Shane. And it's amazing because he hits them up there 22, 23, but he hits them so square and they all come back and he's making, you know, the four yeah. railers and he's making the balls behind the one. And then he's hitting it so hard, the one's coming all the way back into the corner pocket and he either goes or hangs, gives him a good shot. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how good he's doing on the 10 ball break. So what do you, what do you like here? You like the two goes, it looks like. Can shoot it, but the three's no yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. You don't like to play it. I mean, because it's hard to play safe from the three. So this yeah, was, just try to leave distance. Yeah, and just two rail it down there. There's hit not it, a, hit it well. He sure did, and there's not a whole lot more you could do from where he was at. You'd like to do something more dramatic, but the risk was not worth the 
right. reward. Just buy yourself a chance here. I've always been told the simple, simple safe. Don't try to freeze them all the time unless it's just there. Right. Simple safe goes a long way. And that's what Alex tried to do. I don't know that he was that successful with it, but that's it was tough and long and on the rail until Al Katie was rewarded with his good safety play. Now this would be, if he pockets this ball, it's just to play safe on the three. Feels like he's got a better place to play safe on the three. Yep. Now how, how what's the size of the pockets on this table? Four and a half. They're four and a half. Yep. We're using the Aramith Duramith balls. Yeah, that was smart. Pre-planned safety. And a good one. There's uh, no jump cues allowed. There is not a call shot to it. Ten ball does not win on the break. Um, any other? Oh, all ball fouls. You rack your own, but the two and the three is not to be on the corners, so you can random. Just just they're anywhere. just random? Yep. I've really enjoyed the uh, lack of a jump cue in this event because there's been a few safeties there where guys would have jumped right out of them, but the kick and the kick safe was uh, the artistic part of that was missing. And I like kind of what he did there. He was trying to filter the five closer to the seven and just take a foul and make the run out harder. He didn't succeed, but that was still the best of the decisions that you had from where he was at. Probably going to try to get a little past the four for a, a nice angle to get back across for the five up in the top corner. Got just a little short there, didn't he? Yeah. Well, we're a few rounds in the bank pool. He can just stop his rock right there, <laughs> bank the five cross side. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> That's what he could do. But I don't think so. I think he'll try to play some safe. Well, he's looking like he wants to take on the combo. Yeah, and he got about as good as he could on it, yeah, too. Yeah, he, he sure did. Straight. Yeah, see, I kind of liked shooting a four and stopping the cue ball. And then shooting a five, maybe two rails up to, like, the first diamond, maybe on, on the top rail, under right. the eight. Maybe you can get behind the six. You can, you can certainly see that he was on the combo about as good as you could get, yes. and he didn't even come close. You right. know, so that tells you how tough that combo was. So safety was definitely a better option. And he was trying to make a quick kill there, grab a quick game. Look at Alex has overcut it in an effort to get the cue ball clear back down here. So al Katie does not have to pay the ultimate price for the miscombination. So al Al Katie gifted Alex back the first game, and now Alex has gifted David back this game. This might play best real first. Well, I guess he's okay. He got loose. Good work there to pick up just a nice convenient angle to get down to the nine. What round are you in the bank pool? Uh, fifth round. That's good. I understand Tony Shohan uh, got by you in the first round. Yeah, he put it on me a little bit. Just three nothing, that's all. 
<laughs> but I mean, he's a great player. Yeah, it's a right. race to three. I mean, this <laughs> to me, you're the best Happens. banker here. And if uh, anybody doubts that, they could play a long match. But uh, there's a lot of great players here. You can definitely lose a set, but you're still hanging tough. And now you're probably starting to get in gear a little bit on bank pool. You probably haven't played it much. No, yeah, it's it's been a while. I haven't I haven't really played much bank pool, you know. Um, but yeah, getting better every round, which is which mm. feels good. Yeah, get a couple more, uh, a couple nice draws tomorrow or something. Be nice too, you know. Well, Try you get really a little better stroke. You really uh, don't get to play much bank pool in Texas, I don't imagine, because that's not bank pool country. Yeah, yeah, right. And so uh, it's not as easy to. You get back to Paducah much? Um, no, I, I was just there for uh, Christmas and New Year's, and then left for a tournament. But nah, this year I really, I really didn't get to go up there. I went like twice. Um, just been busy at home, really. Man, I know it. I know one thing. It's it's nice to be back here at the Derby after missing a year last yeah. year. It's it, it's nice to be here. Well, uh, another dry break. Yeah, we're glad you're here. You played super at the uh, Moscone Cup. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank really you. good. Every year you've gotten better and better. And we need you on top of it. Yeah, it's it not like we can just pass on maybe America's best Moscone Cup player going right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just really enjoy, you know, the atmosphere and everything. Uh, you know, it's exciting. And it it's is. a lot of fun. And now Matthew is putting together that nice tour. That, that's yeah. starting to look promising because this is the first year. But if that grows at all, we're, yeah. we're looking good, finally. Yeah, be, yeah. be nice. And it's only going to grow, really, you know, especially if uh, the players support it and stuff. Other people will want to join and then more tournaments. Well, and uh, Pool Room is going to put in nine-footers, and there's going to be young guys wanting to come up too because it's going to be exciting to have something to shoot for. We've never really had anything for a long time. Yeah, I was really happy to hear that news and to see Barry Hearn being so uh, enthusiastic about it. That's who we really need. Is yeah. Somebody's got a track record of proving they can do it. So, Mark, here, do you like coming one rail and coming all the way up for the side or just coming and taking the five in the corner? I think just the five in the corner. Let's keep it simple and not do too much. Well, he's going side pocket, so he's under control. Yeah, good speed. Only thing jacked up, but. The seven really helps that matter out. Yeah. Yeah, you can just do anything now. So. Only thing jacked up, but easy shot still from there. Right. Short. You don't have to get perfect position on the six because of the seven, so. So are, are they playing all ball fouls or just cue ball fouls? All ball. All ball fouls? Yeah. Which is really the right way to play. And uh, players should be honorable enough to call a foul on themselves if they do because it looks so phony if you move a ball back. and the, the, It's never right. You know? Yeah. So. Pretty good control, but he's now falling just a little wrong angle and flat. 
but he's close, which means he can go ahead and power it around three cushions. Yeah, going to have to let the cue ball loose a little here. Came over to look at the 10 back the other pocket. I wouldn't think he would go that far. I think he would bring the cue ball two cushions up by the side pocket on the side of the table he's standing now. He's acting like he's going all the way around. He is, too. He's got to slow down. What great right. speed. Oh, Perfect. Yeah. yeah. That was a great shot. Yeah. That's decent speed right there. <laughs> yeah. <in. laughs> the, once you get it in there where I have a good chance to make it, that's good speed. All right. So, uh, Peggy Lyon gifted the game back to him, and then from the dry break by Peggy Lyon, oh, Katie took advantage. And that's what happens. You you lose a game that you should win. It really oftentimes is two games, and then plus you got to claw to get another inning to get back into the scoring. A lot of times you come to the table, it's end rail, end rail. You're starting, you know, yeah. you guys got your pin down there where you got to make a dangerous safety. Yeah, it seems like when you do, you mess up the, the outs or the games you're really supposed to win. It seems like it always comes in twos or threes. Mm-hmm. Right. right. And these guys are good. They hurt you. It's not like you're playing bad players that you get back to the game, almost the same game or very next game. A lot of times three or four games go by before you get another good shot. Let's see what happens. Three and five right behind the one. It looks like the five is going to find the mark. Oh, hung up the four, rattled around. Ten ball got a lot of action on this one. Down table, you don't see and that very often. He let up a little on that one. He His did. His last one was 22, right? And he hit this one 20. 20, yep. Doesn't look like there's much here. Not easy to play safe from here either. No, I think just maybe cut the one to the to the right, the rail, over maybe behind the ten and eight, and just try to lag your cue ball. Yeah, about where he's he is now. Come off the end rail and then back up, and try to use those two or three balls as blockers. And just hate when that five ball's hanging because there's a lot of ways to clatter something in there. Right. Especially when it comes off the rail right there. Two rails right. off the back of the one makes the five really big. Yeah. If he can't see it, he almost looks like he has a, a window in between them. I think we're going to see your shot, that two rail kick. Yeah, as well as he kicks, I really wouldn't doubt if he made this ball. Well, he went right on by it. So Al Katie will be get a, a earned ball in hand here. <laughs> Alex always a fan favorite here because he's so uh how would I put it? Uh, emotional or demonstrative with his feelings. Al Katie wants to play a quick one ten kill here. Oh boy. Well, I don't know about that. He got a little quick on his transition. He's clearly disappointed, and that's the difference of the five by ten. That might have, that might have flopped in on the nine footer, right? Because right. it only barely missed on the ten footer. But that that is the difference, and I really think the ten footer is a much better test for pros. Look at that nice shot. And nice speed on the one two to play yeah. it three rails and. Really, it's got like perfect angle also, like draw back or he can follow with a little bit of inside maybe. But I know the cloth's not real broken in, so yeah, the table was playing slick and the uh, they slide, so the it's hard to get the ball to grab with right. See, so come a little wide on him. A good shot. But, yeah. yeah. He got a lot out of it. That's not still bad. I just don't know if it's tangled up. I must go. I mean, yeah. He still wouldn't have played. Good position. When you were in Paducah, did anybody say anything about Buddy, how he's doing or anything? 
Mm, no, you know, I was there. I went to a pool hall a few times. But he never, he didn't come in. I heard he had moved to St. Louis for a minute hmm. a while back, and then now I heard he's back, though, in Metropolis. I thought he came, moved in with you. Yeah. <laughs> He'd sure be welcome. <clears throat> Alex is one of the very few players that you see that play with their grip hand behind 90 degrees up and down. You yeah. Know, he's on the back. It, most everybody else is either slightly in front or straight up and down. But. And he, like, flicks his wrist every stroke, too. <laughs> Have you ever seen him do uh, pool player imitations of uh, other players? That, yeah. You know, oh, hilarious. He can mimic their mannerisms. He can just generate it out of his brain. <laughs> Have you played against Alex much? Uh, yeah, I've played him quite a few times. Um, in almost every game, really. Well, you two are at the same tournaments a lot, so I would imagine that to be the case. He's a pleasant guy to play. He's hard to beat. You're always going to get a good effort. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he is hard to beat. All right. That ties our score up at two games apiece. Nick Varner is a uh, big proponent of the bank pool and loves it, grew up playing it naturally. And so, but he talks about when he warms up for uh, playing nine ball, he likes to play bank pool exclusively because the pocket doesn't have as much forgiveness. If you slightly miss hit the bank, it will not go in. Yeah. Where you can slightly miss hit the pocket and it goes in, you look cool. And he kind of feels the speed of the rubber and getting the cue ball around three rails and stuff mm. and bigger swings where you, you know, and he says it really helps him to dial in for that so yeah well yeah. i mean makes sense yeah you miss hit the cue ball a little bit and it's amplified because you're going to the rail right. as opposed to when you straight in sometimes you can you know miss hit it and pocket the ball and the cue ball's got side spin on there that you didn't mean you know so you know you didn't hit the cue ball pure but that affects those bank shots so much that you can't get away with that so that's what he was saying for getting the stroke loosened up and getting back in stroke he likes bank pool the best and that's why that's why bank pool I think is like the most skillful game because you know if you if you put just a touch of extra English or not enough the the ball you miss the ball it's, they don't even like really get close so I think it's like got to be the most to me uh, like one of the most skillful pool yeah. games. Yeah, no, I completely agree. It's very skillful. There's no luck in that. <laughs> yeah, right. You either hit them pure or you're done. 1848 on the speed demon. It's a pretty cool app. It's not a radar, but it's a, a sound device. But it's much better than the other sound devices. And uh, it's sophisticated enough it goes within a thousandth of uh, a mile per hour accuracy-wise. So hmm. Just remarkable. I'd never seen it before this event. Oh, that's a nice shot. <laughs> just rub it. Now, it's a pretty routine kick, but it will definitely slow the progress down here for David Alcady. You don't know how many people started the bank pool, do you? It was 400, or usually in the past it's been 400. Yeah, I'll, I'll I don't. Find out. Yeah, no big deal. Well, Al Katie did not get much worse for wear there, kicking that ball firm. Turned out about as well as it could have. And I'll probably just overcut this and try to leave the one on the end rail. Oh, 
oh, he could make it. I didn't realize he had that much of a clearance. <laughs> Looks like he, he got him snookered, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a hit. Oh, almost made the four. He'd rather not made it. Are you able to go to all the matchroom events? Um, yeah, as long as I get an invite, I can go. Um, I think to all of them. I think I'll be able to make it. Yeah, no, that would be powerful. That's, yeah. that's the next step there. You need yeah. to be at every single one of those. At least that you can get into. Well, he's jacked up over the five. That doesn't make this any kind of a gift here to try to cut at it. I think just, I was going to say, yeah, maybe just bank the one. Try to bank it two rails under the 10-7. But caught the four coming down. Well, it's okay because this is going to require a heck of a shot. Yeah, even with the five ball real close to the hole like that, still this shot is, you know, very hard from this distance. Yeah. And the five's not all the way in the hole. So that's what makes it tough. Does change it, yes. Right, and then controlling that secondary object ball is, I mean, now you're just fighting for your life to get the five down. Might be one where you don't pay as much attention to the one like that. I think he was more cinching the ball, and you know. Just and that's the right way to play because you can defend yourself from here. Yeah. If you miss trying to be cute, trying to play position on the f uh, one there, a lot of times you lose that game for doing it when you could have made the ball, and then now you give yourself a chance to to fight. Looks like Alex is considering kicking in behind the one and letting the cue ball run over there by the three. I think he or thinning it. I over think there. he's going to kick. That's what I meant. One. Oh yeah, yeah. Kick and like the, the cue one. ball over by the three. Yeah. Okay, just the kick and stick. That was nice. Even when Alex is playing just a little bit ragged, he doesn't miss plays like that yeah you know, he, right he gets that play down <laughs> you will have a hard time getting past him even if he's a little bit out of stroke and now he's going to be earning another good chance to score a game here from that kick stick shot isn't uh, John Moore an interesting guy that could come back as a left-hander after the – Oh. Know, I mean, amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. I he, wish you, you'd seen the bank shots. He made four bank shots on his 5 by 10 match here and <laughs> just hit the heart of the pocket with each one left-handed. It was just who, beautiful. Who did he have to play? Um, I'm tired, so now you've asked me, but I do have it here. Let's see. Moore played – In my opinion, I think he plays better left-handed. I mean, obviously yeah. he doesn't – he don't break left-handed because he, don't, he right. doesn't have the power. But I think he pockets balls and stuff. Honestly, better left-handed. It's, it's he, unbelievable. He played Roberto Gomez. And Roberto won that, right? Yeah. But it was a tussle. I mean, it wasn't an easy match at all. Yeah, John's even won some pretty tough tournaments right. left-handed. I've never heard of another player that – can come back the other way, you know, that was a pro right-handed and all of a sudden said, no, I'm going to be left-handed now. <laughs> yeah, and win tournaments that way. No, exactly. You know? Yeah. Now, we'll tell you this. Steve Miserec and Mike Siegel played so well opposite-handed that if you'd never seen them before, I'd say, you know, these are a couple of our top guys, and you watch them play right-handed, you say, yeah, yeah. I mean, they could break and run a rack and nine ball on a snooker table right-handed. Mm. Yeah, it was amazing. That's crazy. Both of them were that good. 
I'm absolutely paralyzed left-handed. Yeah, I'm definitely not the best. Terrible left-handed. We got a little flat on this. Now he's right in the middle where he's got to make a decision. A shade either way plays pretty nice, but he's right in that middle zone. Mercifully, the cue ball didn't go another diamond further, or he couldn't reach it either. So let's just roll it with a little high right, or high left, I'm sorry, two cushions. Is your little boy's name Dax? Is that right? Yeah, Daxton. But Daxton. We just call, yeah, we you all call just call him Dax. Dax. Yeah. I see him on Facebook. That's your little buddy right there. Oh yeah, he's a mess. <laughs> he's got the Skyler twinkle in his eye. <laughs> You're getting paid back for what you did to mom. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did you take him out and get his first tattoo yet? Mm, no tattoo. No, no. Not yet. On his neck, perfection or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bag it around in now. Three two in front. How old is he, Sky? Two? Uh he will be two in April. Oh man. That is so much fun. Uh, these are some of the best years of uh, your life here. Yeah. Can't blink. He's oh no. Mm, yeah. Ooh. I don't know. I'm just getting to that. <laughs> yeah. Terrible twos or not. I bet it's mom hitting. loves him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll okay, be breaking, but trailing. 3 2. Squares him up nice. Oh boy, dry break. Is that right? Yeah, dry break. So he's he's let up two mile per hour on all on well since his first break on his next two. That's twenty two, twenty, eighteen. It seems like really David's had like the same results every time too. He hasn't made the side balls. Right. Pretty comfortable rail first shot on the one, looks like. Or he's acting like he can just go straight at it. Maybe I'm wrong. If he goes rail first, the five ball is kind of a little bit of a problem. But if he can go ball first, then it plays a lot easier. Oh, he played kick safe. I was just about to say he might possibly try to kick safe here. But I think he was in a good spot to go for it also. Maybe the five ball is what, what mm -hmm. changes his mind because it is in play there. And if you don't get good on the two, then the rail first shot's of no value. Looks like al Katie's shooting, and this is his specialty here, his long, pure shots. Yeah. I'll tell you, Kazakas played great today. Lost playing a 909 against Filler, but it was a super competitive match mm -hmm. all the way through. He never backed off, and he made a lot of good balls. Was the match close? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the difference, he lost 11-6, but, you know, you can be 11-6 a long ways away and 11-6 close. This was 11-6 close. Yeah. And Filler broke and ran five. I mean, you know, he only lost 11-6, so that means he did a, his job during the other games. He right. just didn't get to play enough.
every year these guys get better. I used to say, boy, I just can't believe they get any better. And then now I don't say that anymore the last five or six years. Yeah. Cause I don't think they could play better, but every year they do. And we're still missing a lot of good players, too. They just can't come maybe because of visa problems or COVID restrictions or something like that. I mean, this, this could be an even tougher field. Pretty routine from here. Just draw one rail out to the middle. And st pretty straight on the eight. And then stop, stop, stop. Do you have a table at home or do you go to the pool room? Um, I do, but it's it's like 15 minutes from my house. It's, like, it's at a, a shop. Um, so I go there to play when I when I do go play. Good out there, and that was uh, right up Al Katie's alley, straight shooting, and then stay in line. Three three is our score. What kind of table do you have at your shop? Um, I have a ration table. Is it that one that has the legs that out come to the middle, or is it the newer one that has the legs on the end? I have the one that's like, um, I think it was oh, see, it's the one that's uh, it's got the, like rounded legs. They come from the outside. Yeah, uh, round. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those ones that the Victory model that has it comes to the middle yeah. like that. I didn't like those at all. That's no, yeah, they uh, they're they're really nice. I, they're they're both good. I'm a, personally, yeah, I like the the one with the legs that I have now. Did you play on the Predator table? Mm, I only played on it in the World Nine Ball, so like the, in the first time they came out. That's the only time I played on it. Well, Peggy Lane didn't scratch. He's going to make the five. He has a shot on the one. Eighteen again on the break. He's been pretty consistent. I think mm -hmm. he's had eighteen every time. What's funny is like on a nine footer, that shot he just shot, mm -hmm. it's like a really short shot, but on this right. table, that's like a full length shot. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you got to hit it a little better. He got a little funny here. I don't know if he can bigger the four and maybe use a little inside spin and hold it so he can play the three back up into the side. Yeah, either come off the four or um, the bank's laying pretty nice too where he can just barely draw back. And for the three in the side, he can bank this ball. Oh, across corner. yeah, across side, across and corner on the two. I see what you're saying. And yeah. Alex is a great banker, so it's not a bad idea either. Which looks like he's playing the billiard off the side of the four. Nice shot. Really nice shot. Little love there, too, bumping the six out instead of having to play the, the combo. True, but that was always in play. You know, I right, mean, that right. was part of the yeah. – so he executed nicely there, and he was rewarded. doesn't have to turn out this way, but it can. It is nice when they are turning out that way. And and he knew that was in the master plan, that that could work out favorably, and he's played so much pool, he, he can kind of feel when it's a high-percentage deal. He knew that was a high-percentage deal that way compared to any other way. Yeah, so this out just – the way Alex is carrying himself and hitting them, hitting them, he looks like he's loosened up a little more. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And this will further embolden his confidence. If he gets out here now, you feel like the old Alex. 
Damn, went ahead and let his stroke out there. Went all the way to the end rail. Really nice shot. And audience recognizes that a lot of players would try to lay up there. He went for it. He got himself here where, you know, it's inevitable that he's going to get out. Looks like he got just enough angle where he can follow off the end rail back up for the nine in the side. It's crazy. Your cue ball's in the middle of the table and you got to have your extension. <laughs> oh, yeah. Perfect hit. You just got to leave the extension? No, he has. <laughs> like, okay. And that was a high quality run out there. I got my five by 10 all fixed up. Oh yeah? Yeah, all new rubber, all new pockets, all new cloth, all new level, all new mm. face, single faced, extended sub rail, four and a half inch pockets. And that way when you get up there, you won't just luck out on me. Yeah, yeah, right, right. exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I tend to do that. I Look try, out. I try to get Justin to come play, but oh no, can't possibly ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing? I, I can't believe he's not here. I know. I know. I miss him too. I saw Marsha made a post that she was sad that they weren't coming, you know, because she yeah. likes it. She loves it. She's more into it. She's probably watching it right now. So. Yeah, right. Hey, Marsha. <laughs> she tells me things about pool I don't know. So made the the two in the side there. Little seventeen. Yeah. Little square hit though. He seemed like he had better action on the balls that time. Yeah. Yeah. When. Um. Uh, yeah. It seems like eighteen. Still missing the side balls when David hit him in eighteen, and Alex missed him a couple of times, but he hit him seventeen there, and it went straight in. But obviously, like you said, you hit him more square. You got to hit him square too. Mm-hmm. Because you you can't miss hit the rack, and you know hope you still make the side balls. They right. don't don't go very often that way. So David here with a nice open rack also. To tie the match back up. Yeah. Seems like we might go all the way on this one. <laughs> I know. I was just thinking that. I was going to say, this looks like the makings of a 10-10. Although um, we haven't had that yet. So that's what I was about to ask you. No. 11-9 was the closest. That was the last match. But the play has been uh, good on both sides. I mean, even the guys that lost played phenomenal. And, and the 5 by 10 can break you down. You get a little weak, you can look real bad yeah. out here. You really can't hide on the 5 by 10. Could be trouble here. No, yeah. He's okay. I don't think he was playing for the side, however. Yeah, so just overhit it a little. Actually, it worked out better, but anyway. Yeah. It's
came a little short there. He wanted to get up about where the head string is, so he was, you know, fairly straight on the nine. So he could just roll down for the ten. Now he's going to play to the other side of the ten again like we saw him do earlier in this match because he went over and looked at it. So that means he's coming around three rails. And this is where your ball speed's got to be pretty good. You have to hit the pocket clean. And even though he hit the thin side of the pocket, he still came up a hair short from where it would have been. All tied up here, 4-4. Four, four. Now, do you get to train with Jeremy very often down in Texas? Um, Not a lot because, uh. you know, still, well, being in Texas, he's in Dallas but or Denton, but I'm five hours from there still. Oh, uh, I in, thought you were up around there. I'm in Lubbock, oh. west, so west Texas. Holy moly. Yeah. You're way on out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, way over there. and But, yeah, if I ever get a chance to go over there or if something's happening, I can go through. I, I'll try to stop, you know, get a day in with Jeremy or mm -hmm. or play around to golf or something, you know, while just just do something. Do you ever get to Houston? Mm, no, you know, and that's like eight, and a, eight hours for me. Eight, well, I, and a, I know eight it's hours. a long way, but there's action. And you get, yeah. You know, I mean. Back when I was a young man, uh, Houston was pretty good. Had a lot of good times. I lived there two years. And uh, best action I ever encountered. And the guy said, yeah, you missed it. Uh, <laughs> you're on the end of the oil boom. I'm like, well, this is the greatest place i ever been. I don't know how it could have been better. But. You know, they still have quite a bit of action. I think every time I've been there, there's quite a bit anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a reason Roberto lives down there. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and if you're looking to play and you go to Houston, it's, uh, it's a tough place to get out of there with your money because you're definitely going to have a lot of competition. A lot of tough competition there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good players. You know what else they have there that's the most amazing thing ever in my life is the most dense fog I've ever seen. It is the whitest fog. You can't see a mm. car, two car lengths in front of you. It's just brutal. Buddy and I were there. <laughs> he says, if you drive me to this game, I'm going to kick it off 800 a rack. You know, and I wanted to see it so bad. I'm driving this car. It was like a dumpster on wheels. We get out there. It's all, it was awful driving in mm. this place. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he is a character. You know, being... Being as close as it is, I'm surprised he doesn't still, you know, come here and, you know, just play, play the events. Yeah. I just don't think his health will let him. I think that, I think he would if he could. Right, if right. He doesn't want to. I called Sully's to try to get a hold of him a couple times, and he'd been in and out of the hospital and hadn't been in for a week or two. But anyway. Yeah, he comes when he comes to pool though he he'll play oh, a lot yeah. a bit. Yeah. And still sometimes he still hits a little flashback or something, plays really good and it's like You better believe it. With that compact amazing. stroke and yeah. experience. He's tough at everything. Well, that was a nice shot. Yeah, he was supposed to go up to Peoria and play Judix James. Uh, 
match. He oh, was a serious match, but he wasn't able to end up going. So. Yeah, I seen he was going to play him. And then I talked to Corey. He went up and played that Abram Shad, or uh, do you know who I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That guy put up a pretty good game with him. Yeah. And uh, Corey says the guy plays real good. Yeah. Yeah. So I've played him in one one tournament. It was we had a pretty good match too. And I seen what was it? he played. It was a big table event. They had it at a bar table event. They were having a, a ten ball or nine ball. And he he beat Dennis or somebody on the big table. Mm hmm. Yeah, the, the guy, that guy plays good. Yeah, Corey only beat them by two games. I mean, it was close. Nice speed there. Mm-hmm. We got some of the best fans sweating this. I know Kathy Kroom up in New York's watching in. She keeps close tabs on this. She wishes she was here. She genuinely loves pool. Got Chris Salvo back in St. Louis. I know he's watching. Alan Oliver. Former Lindy Wood star player. It's good chat. I doesn't want to fall straight, but it looks like he got far enough for an angle. You got a hint of an angle here. You'll have to thump this one home to create much, though. Really good shot. So what time tomorrow do the matches start for the one foot? No. Yeah. yeah, tomorrow those matches are worth four thousand dollars and as my partner Danny Dilberto says, that'll buy lunch in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and good job there. Taking the side pocket out of play by coming in short. And now Katie's picked up some serious momentum here in the last three or four games. He now leads the match five games to four. Now let's see if he figured out the speed on the break and the hit because his last break was... Uh, successful making the side ball and had a good shot at the one. Mm-hmm. You can see he's just nosed over 900 on the TPA, which that's strong on a 5 by 10 It's good on a 9-footer and real good on a 10-footer. Just shows you, you know, how good these guys really are. Yeah. And they never get to play on a 10 footer. Where would they ever play on one? Yeah, so yeah. it's not like they're, they're practicing on them or anything. Except yeah. for Fedor, I think he is. <laughs> I think he oh, does. Oh, yeah. They do have a 10 footer at his uh, the yeah. club he plays at. He played a super match here in the very first one. Nine so ball found the side. He's going to get a shot. He missed those a little even slower. Every break's gotten slower with him now, 16. But. He mishit those, didn't hit them as square, still made the side ball. Didn't come up with a, a good shot, but if the eight's off far enough, he can play off the back of the eight, but I don't think it is far enough up. Right. I think it's it right in the you can't billiard it and you can't play the one off the back of the 
Well, he seems to be going after something. Or maybe just rolling it now. Yeah, he realizes this is, <laughs> in Grady's words, fraught with peril. Yeah, he's wanting to play off the back of it, but I don't think it's there. I think he can hit it good and then not make it. So what do you think here? I think maybe his best shot is to cross the one. Mm hmm Play it play it one, play the in rail between the seven eight and just try to get the one up table. Yeah. And maybe put right in, right English on it and bump the eight and try to stop the cue ball right there. Yeah. Yeah. And just try to hit it hard enough that that one goes all the way down table. That's what he tried to do. He got it the double kiss, caught it a little too thin. Yeah, he went for the eight ball right there, huh? No, I, th I think he was playing your shot. I think you he think was so? trying to play safe. Uh, but I think that uh, he tried to do a little something extra and then got it thin. And so the one didn't have much speed. And then when the cue ball hit the eight, it came back and chipped the one ball back this way. Yeah, I don't think he was trying to bayard it. I think because that, he didn't really want to go after it to begin with, he could see it wasn't laying right. Nice chance for Alex here, you know, down a game now to get it back tied at five. Mm -hmm. Really just needs to make this one ball, focus on making this ball, and then the two's hanging. So he can almost be anywhere. For the two. And Alex, he is he's one of the best with the bridge too. But he's probably had to use it a lot. Definitely in snooker, <laughs> he's gonna be using it a lot. Yeah, and he's not the tallest guy. Not at all. No. Nope. But I but ain't got know, much room to talk. I ain't very tall either. You know the, amazingly though, Moscone and Jimmy Karras and uh Lassiter and none of those guys were tall, but yet they dominated on five by tens. Mm. Uh, so it's a, it's a kind of an oddity. And then when you look at great pool players, I mean, look at Alex, and then you look at every great pool player. Name me one tall one. Every, I mean, yeah, right. Chinnikov maybe, but then, then who else? I mean, there's Kachi. hardly any. Kachi's but the only other one really that's that's tall that plays at high level. Yeah. A lot of you know, back in my day, you had Parika. I mean, he's the smallest of everybody. Allison yeah. Fisher. I mean. I always think it's because there's a short distance between their grip hand and their uh, bridge hand that they don't get the wobble in the stroke yeah, as yeah. easy as a taller guy does. So in most sports, tall gives you more reach and more coverage, but then I think in pool it hurts you a little bit. He just looked at the six on the other side. Didn't know if he got down far enough where he could spin with inside and come just two rails and shoot the six on this side. But looks like he would have the wrong angle if he went that way anyways. Well, that's what he's looking at cause right. for the seven. It's kind of like how you hit the pocket and that dictates whether you get behind the eight or by the eight. Right. Yeah, it looks like he's drawing out of it. Going to shoot the six in the side pocket past the seven. That's a nice hit. Yeah, I think he's <laughs> yeah, a little you bit the wrong angle, so we have to dig in and draw again with a little bit of left English, I think. You play six in the same pocket that the seven's going to go in. Oh, hit that pretty pure. See what I mean, how he's kind of dressed up here. He's a little more confident and he's moving around the table. Yeah. Acting yeah. like he's in control rather than early on. It looked like he was hoping. Yeah, now he's got that little bounce. He, he bounces yeah. around when he gets going. Uh-huh. Like he's feeling good. Look how far his grip hand is behind vertical. Good speed there. OK, 
Okay, so looks like he's gonna tie it back up and back on serve. He's got his he's got the break. Well, to put it in the words of my old buddy Keith McCready, we got a pool match going on here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love his intensity. <laughs> this is a pool match when it goes back and forth. Did you ever get to be around him at all? I didn't. I uh, let, the only time I've, I've ever been around him was a couple years ago when he was here. And did he come in this year? Have you seen him? Mm -mm. I, I, but I've been sequestered in this booth, so I don't know exactly. Everybody's here, but I haven't yeah. seen him for a long time. But uh, he was fun. You, you would like him. He was a character. He'd make everybody laugh for sure. Yeah, I've heard a lot of stories and seen some video clips, so, so I'm sure. Oh, on tight, tough tables, he was hard to beat. And the most relaxed guy, too. So Alex's sideballs are, are coming low now. And he hit those a lot harder than he has been. Yeah, 21 4 3. So. And he's been around 18 the whole match until now. David seems to have more success, and he's a, his last two was 17 and then 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the slower speeds have definitely been better for guys making those balls right behind the one. Can't explain why, other than maybe they just hit them square. But Jeremy seems to think it's because they're accelerating smoothly through the cue ball, and it gives them that little extra accuracy and gets all that power into the rack better, even though it's not as much power. Cross corner bank here. I'll tell you something that I love about Alex's game is when he drops into his stance and puts that tip up there, he stays there and looks for a, just an extended, you know, like yeah. an extra little moment. And, boy, he locks down. And when he gets that, when he gets that going, poof, he just doesn't miss. But he, he works super hard. He, then he keeps that happy-go-lucky attitude so you don't think he's working real hard. But right. he is working real hard. You know, I, I didn't see him. I've been here, we, well, pretty much all of us have been here like two days already, even though this is just the second day of the event we've been here. Well, right. this will be our third day. But the first time I seen Alex was today. And I was like, man, you let your, your facial hair grow out. <laughs> and the first thing that popped in my mind, I thought he looked like Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, he does a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, he's always a fan favorite just because of his attitude. People love him. He makes pool fun. And then he plays great. Yeah, it looks like like great speed. Yeah, he's he's honestly one of my my favorite players to watch. Especially when he like gets in gear, like gets in rhythm. Yeah. It's like Yeah. It's really fun to watch him. He doubled at me at a tournament a while back in Iowa in Des Moines. And uh he was just in that that zone where like it, don't, it didn't matter what happened it was just mm -hmm. always price cue ball was perfect didn't matter where it was he made the ball and it's just you know it's fun to watch you know some people it's not you know it's not right to me, it's like their style some people don't like boring styles right. yeah and like me i was <laughs> i didn't win many awards in my life but i was the most boring player on the <laughs> camel tour well, that's an award right <laughs> yeah exactly i did win many but that's my pride and don't think Kathy and Derek ever let me forget that either. Oh, yeah. Remember course, the time when you won? <laughs> like, could you possibly shut up? Uh. You know what? On the Camel Tour, Alex was too young. You had to be 21. He was 17. He would mm. stay outside the arena, and there was tables out there, and then he would challenge pros coming out of the arena, and he would just bust them out there when he was 17. But huh. he couldn't play in the tournament. But <laughs> in case anybody in there playing wanted uh, to play him some, the, he was ready. The winner comes out, and exactly. Alex sitting there waiting on him. <laughs> it was funny. He was such a cute little guy. He'd have his hat on sideways and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like, like uh, Dennis the Menace or something. Didn't miss a ball. And now he's 40, so that's 20-some years ago we're talking about. He was playing great then. Yeah, he looks to be getting in that little rhythm, too. He's, mm -hmm. he's not walking around looking at anything. He knows where he wants to be. And he's getting there. Exactly. His speed's kind yeah. of come together here all of a sudden. Yeah. 
Well, that'll be our first break and run out of the set. That's the first one. I believe so. Uh, mm -hmm. David broke a ran just a couple games Did ago. Did he? Oh, okay. Yeah. My bad. Let me get that down. I was chit chatting. Yeah, because he made the side ball and he was he had a pretty uh, he yeah. had a good shot in the one and ran out. Yeah, Peggy Lyon made a nice cross corner bank, then stayed in the line thereafter. He made a couple good position plays. You know, I was wondering if the one went cross corner, being on the, you know, when the table's worn out, you can hold those balls easier. But yeah. the table's still, you know, fairly new, new cloth, and th those balls are hard to hold on on new cloth. So I was wondering if it went, but obviously it, it did go. Mm, good square hit. I don't think he's going to be rewarded with it. Or did like something the seven, go? The seven might roll in. Now and then. Looks like he's right in the window. Yeah, I think he can hit it. See, that's funny, and that's right between. He hit him six, almost 16 and a half. He hit him 17, made the side ball. He hit him 16, hit, made the side ball, and then right in between at 16 and a half. Tough to the control. The side ball that. doesn't go. Tough to control, I was going to say, the one ball. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> <laughs> He's a guy, too. You almost always see him smiling, mm -hmm. playing a match or not. He's, he'll be smiling. Well, one, he's a lot like you in that. He doesn't uh, adversity doesn't affect him in a, in a negative way. He he's just happy. It's opportunity. Uh, let's try to make it happen. Right. If it doesn't go well, because and that's what holds up under pressure. If you're one of those guys that's wrapped too tight, uh, rotation pool is not for you because you get a lot of misfortunes and things that you can't control. You just got to roll with it and just try to fight as long as you can, and then sometimes things turn back around for you. Right, and that's that's why I always, you know, I try to smile, I laugh it off if something happens, cause right can't beat myself up over it, and I feel like that hurts you worse than, you know, if you just laugh it off or something, make yeah. the best out of it. Roberto today, uh, Gomez made a maybe the most brilliant run out all the way to the ten and missed the ten, and it was not easy, but it was a shot. He made all the other shots were at least that hard. And he missed it, and then he's sitting down, and there's two guys, and he's smiling, <laughs> pointing at himself, like, how dumb am I? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And and then got right back up there and played great at behind it. You know, he didn't let it, like, creep up on him, and it was at a critical juncture of the match, too, where it was really going to make a difference that mm. if he gets it. So and then he battled back and won anyway. So I always admire guys like that, understand the hardship of this. Nice shot there. So he's going to have to do a little bit here to get on the six. And he might, just to make sure he stays out of trouble, he might just punch over a little and take the bank on the six. I was thinking he could stun up to the center of the table. But. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the right shot. But if you want to stay away from trouble, just take the bank. Oh, yeah, no, he come, he went ahead and drew back right wow. in between them. Good speed control there, too. Cause that's, you can see how dangerous that shot is. Right. And you say, well, Mark, that's not perfect. Well, to hit it even that good is a really good shot. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of the shot I'm saying. You know, if you're not. Right. You know he's feeling good when he tried to draw back in there. If not, you would, like, take the bank on or you would or punch, punch out in the middle like, and take the cut on the six. But he chose to draw right in between them and put the scratch in play. That's just how good he's he's feeling. Yeah. Got a lot out of that. I got on the right angle there. That was a good decision. A lot of times, you know, guys cinch to going around the table to get on the nine. But this definitely gives you a higher yield long term. He's got an angle, but a little straighter than he wanted to be. But should should still be able to get up table fairly easy. Yeah, I think he can smooth this forward two cushions with side spin and just let the spin carry it rather than the power carry it. 
Oh, yeah, he's not. He, yeah, he ain't got a bad angle. More angle than I, I thought he had. Good speed. Good stroke. That means you're hitting the heart of the pocket where you intend to when your speed's that good. Because if you miss that pocket and it still goes in, but you're just a little bit off, it really changes that result. Right. <laughs> First two game lead. A lead down for two games. And I'm going to take a break. Oh, we got a pool match going on here, Sky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. The player's going to be on a short break, so Sky and I will also take a short break. Okay, everybody, we're back. Pat, you lying, breaking. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm here. I'm, we're back, everybody. Pat, you lying, breaking and leading. Seven games to five. Yeah. Okay, so, so Powered made, the, up there. made the side balls that time and got a good shot at the one. Yeah, just almost just short of 21 miles an hour. Okay. Okay, everybody, we're back, and uh, Peggy Lyon made a great break there. Nice shot on the one. Broke in on the speed demon there. What's it say? 20.75 miles per hour. Yeah, and with the looks of the last three or four games, the way Alex has played, should make pretty easy work with this one being pretty wide open. The only thing I really see is five to the six to come across, maybe the seven down for the eight. Other than that, seems like Fairly simple work for for Alex. And he was looking right there at the four to the three because he's gotta bend it if he wants to come two cushions, yeah. right? If he yeah, if he bumps the four here and gets and stops is that's the shot he's he's looking like he would have. But of course he doesn't want to hit it. Boy, what a nice shot that was. Yeah, and got it deep in the corner there to to stay below the four. You know, one thing, when you go and look, like, what happens if I bump this? Then if you do, it's not shocking. You're not, right. Because you've already planned for it. You know, right, that, right. And that, that's very reassuring. It really helps your confidence to take that moment to see what will I have here. Rather than if you get over there and you're surprised. And it's like, oh, God, i got to cut one thin now. Yeah, Alex is very good about doing that, too. I love his decision making too about where he goes. Like on a shot like this, boy, he just doesn't falter on his decision. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was a nice shot there. Super per shot. Perfect speed, slow spin shot. Super shot there. That makes the whole rack play much better. That's why he's taking a moment here to kind of just regather himself and just preserve the angle on the five. Right, and from the from the looks of it, from here it looks like the four goes past the eight, and he could have just come across and took a little cut on the four, but made a great shot spinning the slow spinning it and staying on that side of the four. He is a talent boy. Yeah, just keep your your bridge out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wants to have an angle on the 6 2 so he can pop out for the 7, but looks like he's going to fall fairly straight, which ain't bad either. He can shoot the 7 in the other corner, but would rather, you know, be right. off the rail with a better shot at the right. 7. Right. He wanted to make sure and take the side pocket out and, right. you know, his, and then trying to be cute with that shot was just a little tough, but he sure didn't want to be this straight. But stretched out too on the 5. He yep. might have just let up on it and not, you know, not tried to. <laughs> he scratches his head like, all right, uh, but he's got it. Yeah, he's. 
Got to put a little bit into this one. Yeah, and the inside spin, he knows it's going to squirt a little bit. Oh, boy. Didn't squirt as uh, much as he thought. And you know, that, that stroke got quick that time. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed that it, it was... He, it was a shot that he didn't like, he didn't fancy, and then his stroke revealed that he was not comfortable with that ball. Yeah, and, and that shot, that's why I was saying you wanted an angle on the six. That way you can be out in the middle of the table right. on the seven instead of being on the rail there for the seven. Because being on the rail and having to put inside on it, mm -hmm. it's difficult. It's a difficult shot for anybody. So just a nice kick and stick here, probably. Try to get the seven to the top. Or unless he can see it, he might cut I think it he in. Can cut it. I think he's cutting at it. Oh, okay, he could see it. Just a hint the wrong angle here, but I think he can still manage it. So big game for David here. Could have went down three, but chance to get back with him one. I think he goes all the way over and comes back across on the same side of the table he's shooting from now. Yeah. Doesn't appear that he used any side spin. Just roll it and just accept this angle rather than risk missing applying a little side spin to get closer to the 10. There it is, 7-6 is our score. Yeah, Alex is disappointed he let that one get away. You ever watch any of Shane's fishing videos that he has? Oh, oh yeah, everyone's, I'll see it pop up. I'll, I'll look at it for a minute or something, but, you know, just never, I liked fishing. I fished a little bit growing up, so I, but I've never really been into it, like been big into it, so. But I don't watch it a whole lot, but I do catch it sometimes on there. Ooh. Go out on the ice all day to catch a fish. There's no yeah. deal. Away. You know, I mean, anything. I couldn't think of anything worse. Yeah. He just loves it. Yeah. He says like, it's way it's, better than regular fishing. Oh, he gets twinkle in his eye. Yeah. You talk about it or anything. Yeah. He caught one at 130 feet, and it's bitter cold yeah. out 20 degrees. If, like, if you no talk way. to him about ice fishing, he's your, he'll be your best friend. Yeah. So he's got that, that side ball down pretty good now. He's got the, a good hit for it. 17, is there speed demon speed? So shot like this, he's got a little bit of angle. I wonder does he have too much where he can he get back two rails about where he's at, or does he have too much angle? If he has too much angle, maybe try to run into the three five, two rails. That way you have you stop and you have a shot at the two. Which that's what he's trying to do. He hit it really oh, nice. Oh, really good shot. Yeah. Yeah, because the only thing that could have happened there was really if he went too wide and hit the side of the three and come down, or if he hit the five full in the face and got behind the three. I think he felt like that speed let him cut the ball in yeah. easier, and that's why he wanted to take a chance that way. And, and he also felt like even if it trims off the edge and he doesn't get straight in, he can defend himself right. if he gets in a bad spot. So. so just what he needed here, he made a good shot on the one, stay on the two, and... Good chance now to tie it back up and make it a race to four. A little funny on this, this three to the four now. Yep. Yeah, because the five isn't that easy. A lot of the pockets are covered for the five. So you yes. really can't just get anywhere on the four. Yeah, just can slide over for the four, but 
It's like the only the only pocket he can really play shape in is the same pocket he shoots the three in. Yeah, that's which that's, changes a little. And the softer speeds is not Al Katie's sweet spot. He's more of that. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean, he likes to get through the ball good. He hit the wide side of the pocket, and that cost him a little bit now, angle wise, to get on the five. This is this is tricky shot position wise. So. Good thing with a slick cloth makes this shot a lot easier for him to get on the five because he can draw and it'll bend off that first rail and come back down for the five in the in the side pocket right to the right of him. Yeah, it looks like he got too much. Yeah, bumped the five. A good call there because he really bent that. Well, now it, this is cuttable into the side pocket, but it bothers you that the cue ball is going to go into that clutter over there. And that distracts you 15% from ball pocket and makes this five ball play way tougher. Uh, it's a tough shot to begin with and plays tougher because you're uncertain about your cue ball. Right. And I don't, I can't tell the angle, but might, I don't know where he's going to hit, but it looks like he's going to hit the eight. If he does, he can come off the top of it and scratch. Yep. He, he could probably roll it in and hit the eight pretty full. We'll just hope. The eight doesn't tie up on the ten. Right, or cover or cover the cue ball. The cue right. ball could just barely slip past it and get the eight in between the six and the cue ball. Well, no, it worked out great. Good shot and good call by you, Sky, about how he's going to hit that fall if he goes soft. the way he likes to play that shot for sure where he can stroke that in there. Boy, Peggy Lyon's going to get punished here, but good. <laughs> that last game that he let slip away. Looks like we're going to have an, another break and run here from David. Second one of the match. I always get a kick out watching Filler play after he runs out. And then he runs around the table getting the balls out. And then he runs back to his chair like <laughs> he's got something like his, <laughs> like his hair's on fire yeah. or something like that. He's in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> but he brings electricity into the room, too, what he, oh, right, right. he's on. Oh, man. It's fun to watch. So it wasn't, wasn't the prettiest out, what David. It's not what, where he wanted to be on some shots, but he made it work and, and got out. Really needed that rack to get back in the match. Couldn't, can't afford at this point to give Alex any more games. I, I think it was really good mental toughness. That, to get him through that rack. Yeah. You know, he just dug in and just not going to give up. If he has to make a hard shot, he has to make a hard shot. Right. Now, let's see what Alex does on the break because he, he chose to hit him harder a while ago. His last break, I believe. See if he does the same thing. Yeah, he hit him harder again, and he did not make the side balls either one. Well, mercifully, he didn't give up a shot, right? Yeah, and he hit him 21 again. 21, 3, 4. Maybe you need to hit him like 12. <laughs> <laughs> well, the table does change. And, uh, yeah, I know earlier today, mid-18s is really getting it done. Three and four balls. Filler was making three and four balls. Yeah, it's crazy season. They hit them like 18, 17, 18, and they're not making them now. But they're not catching them quite as sweet, though, I don't think either. Uh, okay. Their cue ball's tailing a little bit more. Fillers was real square. Like, it just come right back down the center, and then mm. stuff was sifting back. And push out time. Shooting a push. I, I know he's a good – he kicks good, but ties up the two a little bit. But he's not going to get this back. I think that this push kind of – 
Kind of makes him the underdog in this game from there with playing another good kicker, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Alex got to be careful, though. If he goes in behind it, you can scratch in the corner pocket. So he may choose to not kick it that direction just for that reason. And also, if you get real cute going two, well, he's going one cushion. If you try to go two cushions in behind it, you got to be careful about the getting the rail. You, well, you called it. Well, you, I mean, he knows that's there. <laughs> <laughs> right? Been there for years, huh? Yeah, well, I mean, that way. That's why I was saying that. Wow. You know, KD doesn't mind. You but know, on that, that shot, I think you, you just got to make sure you hit the one thick. You can't hit the back of the ball because it does put the scratch in play. Yeah, he even kicks off speed. You know, it wasn't like he was doing a whole lot there. He just yeah, got away from him is all. Because I know he knows that scratch better than I know that scratch. So, David, now is a good opportunity to take the lead back. Be like the fourth lead change we've had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on paper, this figured to be a really good match. Well, a little thick, but good speed to mm -hmm. make the ball still fall in. Right. Couldn't have got much better on the four, that's for sure. You like here, you like coming up back across, like yeah. Yeah, I That's think where he's, he's looking, he would like to get that cue ball right back where it's at now, if he could. I don't know. I didn't know if he had the angle like draw back just past the eight and shoot the seven in this corner, down here by the nine. Yeah, it might be just a hair thin for that. Boy, good speed again. I like this guy's speed control a lot. Tell you who has remarkable speed control is Aloysius Yap. I was doing a test with him at Durbin's place, and uh, I've never had a pro have that speed control on so many shots. He was within three inches all the time, and then some of them were pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, his his speed control is is uh, really good. Well, you know, uh, it's it's a testimonial to having a super repeating swing because if your swing is a little bit erratic, you'll never get the judgment for speed control because it, it swings at different speeds all the time or if it's right. exactly the same. So he has a pretty good repeating swing. He's only 25 years old, too. What are you, 27? 28. 28. So that means that was the 28th Moscone Cup or the 27th? I know you're born the same year as – you're born in 94. I know that. That was the 28th Moscone Cup. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's how I keep yeah. track of it. Right. A lot of people at home don't know even how Skyler got his name, but I do. His mom was watching me play in the first Moscone Cup, 94, and it was on Sky TV, and she couldn't think of anything. So <laughs> she just said, well, I'll call him Sky close enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, has that event ever come a long ways from the first year? Four women played the year one. Mm. Two Fisher. on each. Yep. Jeanette Lee and Vivian for us, and uh, Francisca Stark and Allison Fisher for Europe. 
It was the only time they had women in the Moscone Cup. Who played for us, you said? Vivian Villarreal and Jeanette Lee. Oh. And played great. They won so many matches, they quit playing them against the women on the other side and made them play Steve Davis and Jimmy White. And oh, really? Beat them too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, our girls are rock stars. So 17 and a half there. He missed the side ball that time. Al Katie in front, eight to seven. Look at this TPA now up to nine twenty. Trying to tuck the cue ball underneath the two here? What is he doing? Oh, he's trying to score the one. Oh, I see. Pretty safe shot, too. Looking at the kick from behind the six, but from here it doesn't look like he can go that way. But if he can, he can hit it thin and maybe get up behind, maybe behind the four. But if not, it hit it too, it'll go too thin. Maybe up behind the eight. Well, he's yeah. having a mass a a little. Yeah, I think so too. He was able to get past yeah. the side pocket point. That's all he could do really is get a good hit, and the cue ball's going over there. So you yep. hope you get something. Doesn't have to turn out terrible. If you hit right. it. As you can see by his face when he or after he hit he was like kinda disappointed. Still a big crowd here on Saturday night. First weekend of the Derby. A week from now, Saturday night, we'll play the finals of the nine ball. And the master of the table will be crowned. So he chose to follow that. It looked like he had a nice angle just to draw back. But I guess not. He could see the angle a little better than me from here. extension and the bridge and the bridge still might not be able to reach it
Mm, Alex is carving through a nice rack here. Three balls away from tying up the score at eight apiece. Get your extension. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think he's going to need the bridge, too. <laughs> and there it is. 8-8 eight, eight is our score. Race to three. For the money. Or for a one. chance at the money, anyway. Yeah, the guys that play in this, they, they do it to make a living, but they do it out of passion is their first thing. The money's secondary. If you don't right. love the sport, you're not going to be that good at it if you're thinking about the money. Right. There's Chris Reinhold, my old pal from Lindawood. Upcoming good player. Alan Oliver's tuned in. He wanted me to remind everybody that one time we went to a college match and our team was the best. We had a men's unit. No other college could beat it, but the Linda Wood girls did beat our men in that <laughs> match. <laughs> we had some good players, April Larson, Taylor Hansen. Made a sample mm. there, and he looks like. Oh, boy. Oh, he's got a nice shot, wow. too. He's just the, the start he wanted. Yeah. So hit those 21 and a half again, but hit them really square. So it seems like with this rack, you, you have to hit them square. You don't get rewarded. Yeah, I agree. It's been this case because there's been people in here 22, 23, but they're not hitting them as square, and they're just not making balls. They go flying, but they just don't go in the pocket. Like to drag that cue ball up by the side. And then he let the English carry it down there. So that was a nice shot. Well crafted. Is he looking at the 3 7 combo right there? I don't think he wants to play that, but uh, yeah, he'd want to get up on top of this three. That was his speed. Needs to go a little bit. I think he got there just fine. Yeah, so he's laying pretty good. Now he is. He wants to figure out how he's going to go from the four to the five, and the five down to the six is really the key here. Looks like he's got it pretty nice, too, if he comes all the way across where his bridge hand is now. And where the four's at, it's, it's, he's in a really good spot to get on the five. You have the right angle on the five right. to get down there. He's measuring up where he wants that cue ball. Wants to cut the five into the pocket here. Doesn't want to have to stun or draw. That's the perfect angle. Now he can go side rail, side rail, drop, you know, once that cue ball come right into that second diamond down there below the seven. Just fall away from the rail, two cushions. And it gives him a pretty big margin of error speed control wise. Just a little north of that first diamond, but he's fine. Yes, yeah, it slid good off the second rail. It lengthened up a lot for mm -hmm. him. I thought he was going to have more angle on the six here, but it opened up off the second rail. Right, that soft speed and then just the slippery cloth. You can see how he really locks in there visually right when he sets up.
It'll probably just stay on this side, yeah. Nicely done. That was not that easy. He had to punch that in there. If you miss hit the pocket there, even though you're very close range, that cue ball takes off all kinds of odd ways. Get you out of the line where you make a shot. You got it where it was a near certainty. Kind of looks like a, another lead change. Back to Alex. And kind of a nice time for a break and run, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. So both players now have two breaking runs in the set. 9-8, <laughs> Peggy Lyon. Both guys shooting right at 9-20. Wow, that's strong. No, that looks okay, not great, but uh, certainly a great break and a decent shot. It's not quite as easy as Alex had to start off. But this is manageable. Yeah, and he's got perfect window between the 310 to go up and down for the two. Being right-handed seems to hamper him on the shot. He may need the bridge for this. Yeah. Yeah, and being 10-footer, being right-handed too. Yep. Yeah, both of them. They 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 don't help on this shot. Nice shot. Nice shot. He made that look easy. Yeah, and good speed, too. Really good. Now you can get the three in the corner past the seven. So. A little bit on the wrong side of the two. You're just going to take a little longer shot on the three. Still should be fine. But you just don't have a choice. You know, I mean, right. there's nothing else that's worth gambling for. You got this, so you just – and he's a shot maker. This is, You're not going to be Peggy Lyon if he can't make this three ball. I like what he did there. He informed the referee he's using his extension. With, I don't think he had to say anything anyway, but he wanted to take his time on this. Well, he's powering up. He's going to try to go somewhere, not roll it. That's a good shot, too. A little risky, but paid off. Hit it with great speed. He did. He's had good speed control throughout the match. The El Matador looking tough.
Looks like he's going to have to power up a little bit here, come around the table. Yeah. He'll go all the way up table off the top rail also and come back down. I think that gives you the biggest margin of error on this shot. Yeah, and especially for him because he likes to hit balls hard. So Yeah. Or with more pace. He's going to get a little straight on this one, though. Well, I think the old Matador is going to have to play the nine down in the corner right there by where he's going to be shooting from. Oh, wow, he drew back up out of there. Good shot. So it looks like we're going to have a tie ball game again. <laughs> Another break and run out here for Alcady. This will be his third of the set. Race to two and his last two. Have been breaking runs. Last three games total. Yeah. yeah. This is high quality pool. Both players over 900. And that right behind him, that's his World Cup of Pool partner, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. He played in this event also. He did. Yeah, he played good. Uh, well, he, did he play Gorst? Is that his first match? I think so. Yeah, yeah. And Gorst just played phenomenal. Powered up. Something go in? If not, disappointment. No. Okay. Dry. Pretty open layout here if you can get on the two. Certainly not an easy out. Probably only has a, I think he has most of the pocket there going by the six. If he can, if he can make that play, uh, get a little bit of an angle to get on the three from the two, pocket the two past the six, and the rest of the rack plays. You know, if you stay in line pretty good, that's a nice hit there. Perfect speed, perfect angle. Well, he actually needs really good speed control here, too, because if he gets a funny angle here, this gets quickly into a mess. If he gets perfectly straight on the three, that would help tremendously. I like his decision. Didn't try to work the cue ball too close. And got on the right area there. Yeah, he wanted to kind of stay back where he had kind of a bigger margin of error to get straighter on the three, which he's accomplished that. That looks like the angle is just a hint to his left, so he'll play the, yeah, he's measuring up now, play the four ball into the corner pocket over there. That's right where he's standing now. Don't need to come all the way back. Just need to get past the side pocket. Oh, he came too far back. Did not mean to get into it that much, but actually it's going to play fine. <laughs> Maybe better.
Good chat. Still plenty to do here. Yeah, still a little funny getting around navigating, but mm -hmm. he's really going to bear down this this rack like you've already seen he already has, but because he knows it race to two and he needs this game to get on the hill first. Put a lot of pressure on your opponent. Yeah, and he has the next break, so we have the first chance to win. Once again, that great speed control coming across the shot line. Most guys try to come into the balls here. He's had to come into the, uh, across the shot line a number of times, and he's fallen on the mark every time. Not just this rack, but throughout the match. Ooh, that got awkward. He oh, got yeah, the cue ball forward, yeah. He's, he can't reach it, so, wow, okay. He's got to power this, and now he's got to use a bridge. And oh. uh, he got to use side spin, too. I mean, there's a whole host of things going on here. Yeah, the only safe thing is the eight's close to the pocket, which makes it a little easier for him. Yeah. Do you go, I think, extreme low? left English and try not to even get all the way across just past the middle of the table right take that side pocket following. okay well then now this is where the cue ball can warp on you it really takes a ton of pace out of it yep yeah he hit it he hit it really good he didn't like power it he just like put a good stroke on yeah. it and let the cue ball just roll into position so that was a good decision because I thought he didn't have enough power to get this far because yeah, if he powered that, like you said, it would it would warp like it would it'd come out and then bend towards the end. Right. Of the right. Gobble up a ton of momentum out of the mass, but he made the most out of that shot. Good decision and good execution from where he was at. Oh, it's going to get there. He can't bear to look. He's okay. Hey, well. <laughs> Maybe not great, but <laughs> yeah, he could was, have been pinned to the 10. Yeah, he's got a little angle here, but yeah, not an easy shot here. <laughs> nay, nay. He's laughing. <laughs> he announced he's using his extension here. Not going to save it for later in the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, not for the next shot. Mm. Not on this rack. Oh, down in the corner. I think uh, he's playing it there because he can put the cue ball on the end rail if he does miss. But still, I think you got to just make the ball. You just got to go for the make. That's it. They got to have to play it in the side. He had a good. <laughs> <laughs> On the hill. And breaking. 9.35 for Al-Kady. 9.18 for Pat Gillian. You know something about you doing the broadcast up here is it's actually good for your game because it gets you thinking pool in the right way with the right players in front of you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It is. It, it kind of clicks in. And 
And it's, it gives you that different perspective to, to do a good commentary. You have to pay attention to the distinctions of those shots rather than just sitting in the crowd just observing casually. You're more active. You do learn a lot more from these matches. Took a lot off of that one. This guy, I bet that wasn't even 17. Yeah, 16-10. Oh, mm. no. And the, the other one, he's got to play safe. So Alex is at least getting to the table this game, which is all Alex, you know, can hope for at this point. Mm -hmm. But he needs this game to make it hill hill and break it. Well, we said early on this was destined to go this distance. Yeah, we said like 3-3 three, three or 4-4 <laughs> yeah. four or something. It's just shape it up like it's going to be one of those. It is. They both played great. You know, it's been – they've really won their racks majority of the time. They, they've really played good. So he's – Good decision. He's going to let them see it, but – good. took the kick and stick out. He's going to have to – Go into it. You know, I think with a high ball here, Alex might be able to go high right and tuck that cue ball, you know, where it kind of dips on the end rail there and go over by the between the seven and two. Yeah, yeah. But the cue, the one ball can come around three rails too or off the ten when you do that and sometimes give up a shot. But there's not a lot of choices here, it doesn't appear. What about playing that shot? But I wonder if he can make the one, bank the one into the 10, like towards the 10. No, that's what I'm saying. That's what the angle would be if you want to warp that cue ball. Yeah, there. yeah. It goes right at, but if it clips the 10 light, then the one comes over on that side. So, and Alex was looking at doing something different. Maybe he's going to bank the one straight up. Super thin it. Use the five to stop the cue ball. Oh. Yeah, he wanted to miss the three going up. He wanted to just lay the one back up table on the end rail. <clears throat> well, this will test straight shooting here because not only do you have to make a good ball on the side, but then you have to make a tough combination. And sometimes the volume of risk on each of those shots suggests that maybe you're better off to just play safe on the one. Now, if you feel confident about making the one and can get close to the 2-7, then okay. But if you're gambling to gamble, that will quickly catch you. Ooh, I don't know if he's going to like Oh, it did spin over a little bit. Yeah, I no, it's a great shot. I thought he might be coming straight in at the nine, but. He didn't get where he wanted to be, but boy, he hit the ball with authority, and he had to warp that out around with inside spin. So, I cannot discredit his effort there whatsoever. He's got the right angle to play the combo, though, because the two's going to come out a little, and the cue ball's coming across. Right. Position on the secondary object ball kind of comes with this shot if you hit it good. But we saw him play a combination that was much easier to play earlier, and it didn't even come close. You know? Yeah. So, you can look bad on this shot, but if he connects, boy, it's a it's a match winner. Definitely not in the mood to play safe. Well, Alex got a turn. That's what he was hoping for, just one more turn. Now, this is thin. This is not easy either. Oh, I like the way he played it. Oh, that's, oh, brutal. He played it off the rail to hold the two. It was a really nice, uh, well-executed shot. It wasn't like he cobbled yeah, yeah. it over there. He played it that way. Yeah, I, th I thought that was the right shot to play the two off the end rail like that. That way, yeah. like you said, it, you hold a, a better shot at the two. I guarantee you yesterday that seven falls. You know, I yeah. mean, just as recently as yesterday, the table was just a hair slicker, I guess. Now, the only thing for Alex is he's got his fingers crossed.
Now you gotta have that good timing on that transition from backswing to four swing here. This is that this is that pivotal moment in the match where if that gets abrupt or quick and you get excited to see if you won or lost, made or missed, it contributes to the miss. Good job there with authority. There was nothing tentative about that ball. Good chat. Well, the 10 ball plays a lot easier if you're close to it. So that's it right now what he's yeah. thinking about here. He didn't want to play that 10 ball from range. If you can get good on the eight, that makes it a lot easier to work that cue ball close. But he's got the right ball here to set up on the eight. Nice. He can pinch it around two cushions. How's his speed? Respectable, not fantastic. Kind of in between. Yep. Because you ain't got enough angle to go down and back up easy, and you, you're not on the like straight in where you can you can draw back or whatever for the nine on the side. Yeah, you can't just totally kill it, otherwise you're cleared down by the spot at the best. Mm. He might go around. He might be going down to the end rail and back down. But really gonna have to hit it because Yes, okay. Now that's nice. He got on the side pocket. Got to stun it to the side cushion here so he gets down by that first diamond. A little bit of left English. A little weak? Yeah. Well, he was not able to get it there close. And now <laughs> this shot, this, this is a bear of a shot. Yep. Still got to make one shot right here. One tester. Match ball here, but a tough one. Yep, didn't feel comfortable down the first time. So I had to re you stand up and reset. And it's really important because you don't want, if you lose, you want to at least for feel like you gave 100%. Uh, oh. oh, good speed there. Yeah. That was. What was those? Six? What was his TPA? 924. 9 okay, Sky, thanks a lot for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. I know the fans at home do. This has been an AccuStats presentation of World Class Pool on behalf of all of us. Thank you for joining us and see you again soon. So long for just a while. It is Roberto Gomez and Joshua Filler.